Well, I'm in uh, Selsey, Farthings, uh, Selsey, with uh, my lifelong hero, Sir Patrick Moore. Nice to see you. And it's lovely to, uh, lovely to see you, Sir Patrick. And, nice to see uh, you. Yeah, we had uh, a lovely lunch. And uh, yeah, I first wrote to Sir Patrick when I was about 13. And you, mm. you wrote me a letter back um, <laughs> and about uh, my interest in photographing through a telescope. And I've just recently, after 40 odd years, 45 years. I mean, I've been doing astro uh, the odd bit of astronomy throughout, but I've just recently bought a telescope and uh, I, I took some film of the solar eclipse, which I sent to you recently. And um, I was very surprised when you when you phoned the next day. It uh, was a bit of a shock. But, uh, well, I tend to phone rather than writing now because I've a bit of trouble in my hands. Old wartime spine injury has caught up. As you can yeah. see, I mean, I'm not very mobile, and I. I find it easier to film than write. Yes, well, that's uh, I can I can understand that. But it's, <laughs> sorry to see that you've got a problem in that way. Blame Hitler. Yeah, yeah, we blame Hitler for a lot of things. Certainly. Yeah. But um, we've just been having a look around your garden, and the I think you're, there's a sky at night uh, star party. Yes, uh, the equinox party. Yeah. So I have really excuse to have a party. Yeah. It's a good garden for it. It's very nice weather today, which is good. It's fantastic weather today. We're, we're, we're pulling out awesome stars, and I think we should see them in the next one. Yeah, I, I think you'll uh, definitely get a good. We a should good do. <laughs> if I uh, if I can, I may um, may come back, and if that's all right, and do that. Yeah. I haven't got my scope with me at the moment. But I've got plenty of scopes here. Yeah. I've got my 15 and a half inch, yeah, and my I... 5 inch cook, and my 12 and a half inch protector over there. Yeah. I've got plenty of telescopes there, and as you can see, so if you stay, you won't, you won't be stuck for a telescope. Um, now, the moon landings, I remember your your coverage of the uh, of the moon land. Well, I was involved in that because I was one of the NASA moon mapper, so I was very much involved in it. Yeah. did all the covers. I um, made two very tense moments with Apollo 11, for example, when it was yeah. going down, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, who I knew, of course. And uh, they could land on the moon. Yeah. The first time it had been done, had they made a faulty landing, they couldn't have got back. No, that's right. Cost. So when I heard Neil's voice coming through, the eagle has landed, that was a great moment. Yes. And the second yes. very tense time, when they took off again, because had one ascent engine, one engine, and that had to work properly the first time. Like that's right. did. <laughs> Good piloting by Neil Armstrong. It was indeed. Yeah, fantastic. It was a fantastic event. I stayed up all night to watch it. As, uh, <laughs> as, as, yeah, as a little boy, it's one of the few, well, one of those days when everybody, everybody can remember what they were doing. Yeah. Travel to Mars. There are two main obstacles there, that see. One is radiation. Yes. And that's a, that really is a problem. Yeah. And the second was the politics. I mean, George W. Bush may start a new war at any moment. That's right. If he does that in the car. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the radiation business, I mean, the, whoever goes to Mars, I would imagine cancer is in their future. Well, we don't know. They've got, to, they've got to some kind of a shield against it. Yeah. What can be, I don't know. You can't get any chunks of lead up. You know, so there's got to be some way of, um, of, of uh, dealing with that. And that is going to be the main hold up, I think. Yes, yeah. Well, let's hope, uh, hope something's sorted out, solved, so. In, uh, so we can go ahead in the not too distant future. Well, I won't see it. You no. may. Your children probably will. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about me. I'm the, the way I feel sometimes, but uh, let's yeah, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Something my sister, Jan, my sister Jan has uh, been a, a fan of yours for a long time. She asked me to ask you um, your thoughts on God. Uh, I haven't met him yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> ask me again in 10 years. <laughs> okay. So somebody um, told me your response to uh, a, question, a question about astrology, but I'd like to ask you, because I thought your response was brilliant. What do you well, um, I said this, um, astrology, after all, is pure superstition. Astronomy is science, you can't confuse the two, and I say anyone who does, all I will say is, astrology proves one scientific fact, there's one born every minute. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Thank and of you. course, astrologers, flat earthers, creationists, they're all quite fun, they're quite harmless. We're in a different position now, but uh, there's one one more thing I meant to ask you about, Patrick. The uh, Giant Hadron Collider, uh, Large Hadron Collider. Personally, I think the uh, newspapers are making a big thing out of no nothing. So well, I wonder what you think about the... Uh... I've had lots of calls about it. 
is there any danger to anybody or danger to the earth? I say, I think the dangers are about as great as the chance of a flying saucer coming down from heaven and landing on the back of the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> One other thing strikes me too. There are still people, mainly in America, who believe that men never went to the moon and NASA faked the whole thing. What do you say to these people? Well, all I can say is, if ignorance is bliss, they must be very happy. Ha, 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 ha.